The second major update for Unreal Engine 5 just released called 5.2, and there are two reasons why it is a big deal. They are procedural content generation and substrate materials. Procedural content generation is a powerful tool that allows you to use random generation to create complex models and environments. It is artist-friendly programming that lets you define rules which perform specific actions. Procedural tools are common in a lot of 3D programs. Substance Designer allows the user to generate materials procedurally without any textures, and Blender has geometry nodes, a powerful node-based editor to create complex animations and models quickly. Procedural tools are essential if you have any repetitive tasks. When Epic Games made the Matrix City demo, they generated it procedurally. Since the city is made up of millions of unique objects, it is impractical to hand place every single asset. Instead, they set rules to determine which streets to include, where buildings should appear, and the size of those buildings. What would take months for an artist to create can now take seconds to generate, and they could pick from an infinite amount of randomized cities. But in order to generate the city, they had to use a program called Houdini. Houdini is a powerful software that is used in most movies and games. But if you ever use Houdini, then you know it is really complicated. If you wanted to create your own procedural tools for Unreal Engine, you had to use Houdini. Until now, Procedural Content Generation, or PCG for short, brings the power of procedural tools into the engine. We don't have to use another program, we can do all our work directly in UE5. For example, let's create a simple forest. On the right is a PCG graph. To do so, we first have to add points to the landscape. Use a surface sampler. In order to preview the points, press the D key. Now I think there's a little bit too many points. So what I'll do is drag from out and use a density filter to remove the points. I can increase the lower bound, which will slowly start get rid of points. To add random rotation and scale, use a transform points node. Absolute rotation, so the trees are always facing up. Set a max rotation of 360, so each point faces a different direction. And for the scale, be a random range from 0.8 to 1.2. Finally, to spawn static meshes, use a static mesh spawner and spawn two meshes. One will be a tree and the other one will be a different tree. I'm able to move it around and those trees will automatically generate randomly for me. And if I want this to affect my entire landscape, within the surface sampler, check unbounded. Just like that, we can create a massive force quickly using the power of procedural tools. While this example is simple, you can make these graphs and rules as complicated as you want. This graph right here creates an oasis. Let's say you were creating a desert environment and you want to add an oasis. Well, all I have to do is drag in the oasis PCG and it is automatically created for us. I didn't have to hand place every asset. Thanks to the rules I set up, it spawns instantly. I can even move it around and it will generate a new oasis each time on top of the landscape. Or I can make this a really long oasis. And if we feel like this oasis has to be huge, then I could scale it up in all the axes. So we have just a massive forest of palm trees that the player can explore. I can even change properties directly in the editor. That's why I don't have to jump into the PCG graph every time I want to make a change. For example, I expose the property tree amount, and if I want less trees, I could just bring this down to something like 0.05 for less trees in the oasis. Or if I want a lot of trees, then I could bring this to something high like 0.8, which will create a super dense environment. Obviously, oasis are not square. They do not look like that in real life. So I can also use splines to control the shape of PCGs. Let's say if I want a roundish oasis, then by just moving the splines, scaling and rotating them, I'm able to get the exact shape of the oasis that I want. Splines are not just for creating shapes. I made one that will cut a path through the PCG, removing rocks and trees. So if I just drag it out right there, grab one of the edges and drag this out, you'll see that I'm slowly cutting through the oasis environment. So maybe travelers always go through this path when they're cutting through the oasis. They can also interact with the environment. It wouldn't make sense for trees to grow from the water, so the PCG knows where the water is and does not add trees there. We're not just limited to natural environments. You can generate pretty much anything, even completely new 3D models. And in a demo released by Epic, they generated this entire world. Really, the possibilities are endless. Also, unlike Houdini, procedural content generation runs in real time. That means you can have gameplay elements affected. 
For example, the player can press a button and the whole world changes. The second big addition is a brand new material system called Substrate, which makes the process of combining materials a lot easier and more realistic. Oftentimes, objects are not made up of one material. They're made up of several materials layered on top of each other. For example, this sphere is made up of two materials, metal and dirt on top of it. If we look at the materials graph, we have metal down here and dirt above. The only problem is that we have to use lerp nodes to combine them, and lerp nodes do not take into account which layer is on top or their thickness, which can lead to unnatural materials. Substrate changes this. It allows us to combine materials on top of each other and to set a layer's thickness. This means each of these materials are calculating their own reflection. Here's that material combining metal and dirt in 5.1, and here's a similar one in 5.2. 5.2 material looks a lot better. With Substrate, glass is now easier to render, and we can combine two materials in unique ways, like with this orange material on the bottom and blue on top. A material like this was impossible before Substrate. You can create advanced materials like Opal, which Epic Games showed off. It is combining four different layers, which are all realistically interacting with each other. Notice how there are multiple layers of reflection. Of course, there are other improvements to the engine. When Unreal Engine released, it introduced a new lighting system called Lumen, which gave us high performance dynamic bounce lighting. It also introduced a new shadow rendering system called Virtual Shadow Maps. Virtual Shadow Maps allow for soft shadows and shadows at far distances. This was impossible using Unreal Engine 4's cascaded shadow maps, which would disappear at far distances. And while virtual shadow maps are great, they are not as accurate as ray trace shadows, which shoot thousands of rays from a light source to create shadows just like in real life. If you want to enable ray trace shadows, you can enable them on any lights in the advanced settings. In 5.2, ray trace shadows got a major upgrade. Now they're a lot more accurate and can cast smaller shadows. It is most noticeable on area lights. Here are ray trace shadows in 5.1, and here they are in 5.2. Notice how the shadows look more natural and sharper. Other changes to lighting include more accurate reflections and metahuman occlusion, which was improved on thin surfaces and hair, which was glitchy before 5.2. Another big addition to UE5 is the ability to create your own custom tools with scriptable tools. In Unreal, under modes, we have all these useful tools. For example, modeling mode gives me access to tools to edit and create models. The only problem is if we want to create our own tool, we would have to code it in C++, which is really complicated. Scriptable Tools changes this. It allows us to create custom tools without a single line of code and blueprints. And while it does look complicated, it is a lot easier than coding it. For example of why this is useful, a common workflow, especially when placing natural objects, is I drag out the mesh, I then rotate it randomly so it doesn't face the same direction as other meshes, and then I scale it. I create a tool that automates most of that process. To get it, all I have to do is select Scriptable Tools, and then I get to select my own custom tool. I'm able to set its mesh. So let me go add in the rock. And now I get a preview of what that rock will look like in the world. And to place it, hold down the left mouse button and then drag to then increase or decrease its size. So very quickly, I'm able to add different size rocks in my world. And I can even add a random rotation in the settings. So now this rock has a random rotation each time I set it. I also added the option to place a random mesh from a list. So if I just select that, now it's gonna pick a random mesh to spawn each time. I work a lot faster with this tool, and in the future, I can create more tools to speed up my workflow. Scriptable tools can also interact with procedural content generation and geometry script, which means we can pretty much create any custom tool. Speaking of tools, for most of the modeling mode tools, we now get this little widget in the bottom left-hand corner which allows us to input accurate changes. For example, if I bring this up and I want this to be exactly 300 meters, then I could type in 300 right here. Before this tool, we had to guess. Now we know exactly what we are doing. Those were all the major changes of UE 5.2. These are just the ones I thought are important. Of course, there are hundreds of changes and bug fixes with this release. So if you are curious, you can check out the release notes or the Unreal Engine roadmap. Unreal is more important than ever because half of all announced next-gen games are being made on UE5. There's no better time to learn Unreal Engine than now. Luckily for you, I have an entire free course right here on YouTube, which goes over all the essentials to learn UE. You can check it out in the description below.